try an example to analyze a one level subframe. This is a multi story building. We are analyzing the subframe at the first floor. The GK is 25 kN per meter, QK is 10 kN per meter. The loops are acting uniformly distributed throughout the beam. From the subframe here, we know that the upper column is 3.5 meter and the lower column is 4 meters. The beam span is 6 meters, 4 meters and 6 meters. The beam size is 300 times 600 and the column size is 350 times 300. You are asked to determine the moment and shear acting on each beams and columns. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solutions. In order to solve these questions, these are the typical steps. First, you need to determine the stiffness of the beam which is determined by using k equals to ei per l. As all the beam and columns are made of the concrete of the same grade, the e will be constants. At the end of the day, the e will cancel out each other. You may simply assume e is equals to 1. If you still wish to obtain the exact value of the E, you may refer to table 3.1 in Eurocode 2. The E differs in accordance to the grade of concrete. In order for you to determine the stiffness, you require the second moment of inertia, which is B H power 3 divided by 12. This is obtained based on the sections of the beam and column respectively. The L here refers to the spans of beams or columns. Next, you determine the distribution factors using the formulas. The stiffness of the member divided by total stiffness of the joint. The distribution factors is actually quantifying the percentage of the stiffness of that specific members out of the entire joint. This is calculated on basis of the higher stiffness the member is will take a higher magnitude of the load out of the fixed end moment acting on the members. Next, you need to determine the design load. Multiply GK and QK with the factor of safety of 1.35 and 1.5 respectively. And you know that the members are designed to be continuous. You will need to obtain the envelope shear force and bending moment diagram in order for you to obtain the most critical loading acting on the members. This leads to a situation of the maximum load and the minimum load. The maximum load will be 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK while the minimum loads will be 1.35 GK. The permanent actions are always there and the variable actions can be there and can be not there. The factor of safety will always go with the respective GK and QK and therefore in the existence of the variable actions maximum load will be considered. In the absence of the variable actions, minimum load will be considered. While analyzing the structures here, you will have to cover different types of load case of maximum and minimum throughout the beam spans. 
This can be done based on two types of load set. Either one is applicable. Let's say you choose the load set number two. You will run the analysis for all the maximum throughout the three span, followed by maximum, minimum, maximum, and then minimum, maximum, minimum. Once you obtain the shear force and bending moment diagram, you impose all the three load case together in order to obtain the highest value along the span. Alternatively, you may use load set 1, where you start with maximum, minimum, maximum, and then minimum, maximum, minimum, followed by two continuous span with maximum, followed with a minimum. And the two continuous maximum span will move along the three spans. For the analysis of the three span structures, you will require four analysis. Next, you need to determine the fixed end moment. The member is considered as a continuous member. Therefore, the fixed end moment will be WL squared per 12. Substitute the W max or W mean into the equations, you will get the fixed end moment. Then you will carry out the moment distribution methods. Find the reactions at the columns. Draw the shear force and bending moment diagram of the beam. Calculate the moment at the columns and superimpose all the shear force and bending moment diagram for the beams and columns. You will get the largest shear and moment acting on each member for all the load cases. As you can see here, the analysis of the frame is very tedious and lengthy and you will need to conduct several times of different load case for the analysis. Analyzing a frame structures may take a long time. With that, I have developed an Excel spreadsheet to help me to deal with the analysis. Now, I shall guide you through the step-by-step -step of the analysis. First, you need to determine the stiffness of the beams and columns. Using the equations K equals to EI per L, you will require the second moment of inertia and also the span of the beams and columns. Since the E it will cancel out each other later, I assume E is equals to 1. The span for the beam here it will be equals to 6, 4 and 6. And the span of the upper and the lower column will be equals to 3.5 and 4.0. The beam size is 300 times 600. Therefore, the second moment of initial will be equals to 0.0054 meter power 4. Next, the column section is 0.3 times 0.35. Based on the arrangement of the section here, 